I can guarantee you that in this video, LeBron James will be lifting up the NBA Championship trophy in the final game of his NBA career. We're starting it off by turning the clock back to the 2022 offseason. The Lakers should have been more aggressive this past offseason in my opinion. They should have been more willing to trade picks and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that this Lakers team has the right players around LeBron James so that they can compete. That means trading Russell Westbrook for De'Aaron Fox, which is pretty unrealistic, but it's 2K. I don't really care. We're giving LeBron a good roster. I don't care how it happens. It's happening. We're going to go out and we're going to get Clint Capella for Brooke Lopez and Austin Reeves. They only had Austin at a 70. He's made a huge improvement in real life. Now we've got Clint Capella, who we're going to trade for Josh Giddy. I want to make sure that LeBron can compete for a couple years, so if we can get some young guys to build with, that would be ideal. And Shea Gilgis Alexander is another one of those guys. He progresses well in 2K. He's an 86 overall, so even though we just got De'Aaron, he's on his way out of here. So essentially, we've become the Los Angeles Thunder as we've added Shea Gilgis Alexander and Josh Giddy, and also Derek Favors, who we're going to trade for some future first round picks. Two firsts for Derek Favors is crazy. 2K, please fix your trades. Like, I would enjoy it more if the trades were more realistic in this game. But hey, it is what it is. I'm going to put y'all on. Go to the final day of free agency. Usually, guys will be willing to take less money. And we were able to use our mid-level exception to add Tyus Jones here in free agency. And usually, in the last day, you can kind of get some steal signings. Now, we're going to trade Tyus. Sorry, bro. Welcome to the team, but you're on your way out of here. We're going to get Jordan Poole and Draymond. Green. Draymond's got to be ecstatic to be in LA alongside his buddy LeBron, but unfortunately, you're out of here, bro. We can go get Rashawn Holmes and Harrison Barnes. I mean, you're still going to be in California. It's just it's just going to be with the Kings. You'll be all right. And then Harrison Barnes, welcome to the team as well. But yeah, don't get too used to it. We're going to go get John Isaac. He's a defensive player who should be really good for us. Now we've got a pretty solid rotation, a good seven-man rotation. So, you know, if we get deep into the playoffs, guys might have to play a few extra minutes. It's okay. It's just some good cardio. Y'all will be all right. But we get off to a good start to the season. LeBron and AD are all-stars. I wanted SGA to be an all-star for us. I'm surprised he didn't make it, but we're still performing really well. 43 wins on the season so far. So I'm not too worried about that as LeBron is All-NBA, but Anthony Davis actually not selected for any All-NBA or All-Defensive teams. Kind of surprising, but John Isaac did make All-Defensive second team. We had three guys averaging 22 a game or more. LeBron was the leading scorer by just a little bit, and we are the first seed in the playoffs going up against John Morant and the Grizzlies, and they're up 3-0. They sweep us, the eight seed. I don't understand 2K. Like, when does this happen in real life? How? How? With our roster against theirs? How? But we're going to go pick up Dennis Schroeder. Welcome back to LA. Did y'all see the steal and then the and one? Oh my goodness, that was so tough. Y'all see the game against Memphis. Schroeder was clutch in that one. But we're also going to make a huge move before the season. We're adding Cat and Jared Vanderbilt in exchange for Anthony Davis. AD can become a free agent. I mean, so can Cat, but... AD, I was looking at the contract extension thing, and it didn't seem like he was for sure going to come back, and we were able to make our rotation deeper by adding Jared Vanderbilt, so I thought it was a worthwhile trade, although maybe I made a mistake because LeBron was our only all-star this year, while AD was also an all-star. Unfortunately, we did trade him, though, so I thought we might need some more firepower, and I'm going after Anthony Edwards here, and I was actually able to get him for Josh Giddy, Jared Vanderbilt, and a first-round pick. So now, we're the Los Angeles Timberwolves as we have Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards on the roster. LeBron, even though he's old, he's still getting buckets 39, still averaging over 20 points per game. Looking at the season stats, we had a lot of guys scoring for us. It was more of a balanced scoring attack. And also, before we get into these playoffs, if you enjoy the video, subscribe. Anyways, let's check out the first round. We got Sacramento. They're the seventh seed. That's light work. We get out of there in five. Round two, we've got the Pelicans. I feel like we match up well against them. We should really be able to get this dub. They take game one. We take game two and game three and game four. They do take game five, but in game six, we're out of there. We're headed to the conference finals against the one-seeded Denver Nuggets. But again, I feel like we match up well against them. So I think we should be able to win this one. We end up taking game two. They take game three and four and five. Like how? 
how? I don't understand with the rosters we put together how this happened, but LeBron wants to retire. You got one more season in you, I promise, Ron. You were averaging over 20. You'll be okay running back one more time. I know those knees are crying for help, but just come back one more season. You'll be okay. LeBron is a 91 overall, still the best on the team, even though he's so old. And now we're looking at trades. JP doesn't really progress in 2K when you come from the 2022 offseason like he does in some of the other simulations. So I went ahead and got Alperin Sangoon. Also, as y'all saw, we did end up picking up Obi Toppin as well. So I feel like we're well positioned to make another run and we're starting off the season really well. Although mid-season, it seems like we hit a little bit of a speed bump. I really said a speed bump. I sound like an old head, but yeah, we hit a little speed bump. A five-game losing streak is crazy from this squad. So we're going to go get Tyrese Maxey and Avisa Zubats for John Isaac, Rashawn Holmes, and a first. Although John Isaac is good defensively, he's not bringing too much to the team offensively. So I thought this could be a solid move for our team. And this year, we made a big leap when it comes to all-star selections. We had Cat, we had SGA, and we had Braun. So that was good. But this was our worst year when it comes to the wins and losses column. And we're actually going to be fighting through the play-in tournament in what could be LeBron's final season. Because remember, we had to override his retirement. And we're taking on Denver once again. This time, we start off the Series 1-0. They take the second game. And we're actually able to take the third game. And it looks like an upset could be brewing as we take Game 4 they take game five, but in game six, we're moving on to face the Sacramento Kings who have Anthony Davis, Dame, and Paolo Boncaro. A solid squad, but look at our team. We'll be just fine. We should be able to get them up and out of here easily. We've probably got the greatest seven seed squad of all time as we move on to the conference finals to face the Houston Rockets, who again, I don't think are any match for us. Our roster on paper should be nearly unbeatable. And we end up taking game three. We take game four, so we're up 3 1. They take game five. And the last thing we want to do is blow a 3 1 lead to end off LeBron James's career, but we might do that. So we got to shorten the rotation. Bron, you're going to you're gonna have to play a couple more minutes, but you'll be okay. We're going into game seven, and shortening that rotation worked. I'm the coach of the year, man. What can I say? As Cat is the conference MVP, and we're moving on to the finals to face the Brooklyn Nets, who have Kevin Durant, a Braun versus KD finals. If we can win this, this will literally be a storybook ending to LeBron James's career. As you can see, on paper, again, nobody's better than us on paper. On paper, we're winning everything, but what matters is when it comes down to the matchup and who goes out there and wins and loses. I guess that's how basketball works. We get down 3-0. We take the next two, though, and now we have a chance to get the 3-0 comeback, and in game six, we end up winning again. Three straight wins. Can we somehow force the 3-0 comeback? We're moving on to a seventh and final game in this series where we could upset Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets after being down 3-0. Is it really an upset considering the roster we have? I don't know, but we're shortening the rotation. We can't afford for this comeback to fall short. And in a storybook ending, we've got a one-point game with 45 seconds left in a Game 7 to pull off the 3-0 comeback. And Anthony Edwards gets the ball, pops the 3, and it's good. The Lakers are up by 4 points here. The Nets desperately are looking for an answer. Kevin Durant pulls up a 3, a tough shot fading away. He misses, and the Nets are hustling on the glass. Ben Simmons is able to make the save, and the ball goes into Kevin Love. Simmons gets the ball back, he's driving to the basket, and he gets the layup to go. It's a two-point game with less than 20 seconds left on the clock. And of course, the Brooklyn Nets have to foul. LeBron James is at the line, and in typical free throw fashion, he does end up missing the second. He's got to make it a little interesting for the final game of his career. The door is open for the Nets if they hit the three, and they end up firing one. It doesn't go in, though, and the Lakers get the ball back. LeBron doesn't take the free throws this time, and it's pretty much wraps. The Los Angeles Lakers pull off the first ever 3-0 comeback in NBA history and are now champions. LeBron James wins a ring in the final game of his career, completes a 3-0 comeback in the final game of his career. This could really be a fake video the way this played out. This is crazy. It's not fake though, I promise y'all. 
LeBron lifts up the Finals MVP trophy as he has a near triple-double in the final game of his NBA career, and throughout the playoffs, he averaged a little under 20 points per game. Oddly enough, though, Cat was the Finals MVP, even though LeBron lifted up the trophy, but we don't really care, and when I have him lifting up that trophy in the thumbnail, Bron lifting up the trophy, it's not clickbait. I mean, it happened in the video. LeBron gets his fifth ring. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Be sure to like and subscribe.